Ladies and gentlemen, fellow counselors, will you please stand? Yeah, just come in. I'd like to welcome our Mayor, Councillor Ken Harper, our Deputy Fair Mayor, Councillor Nigel Yates, and our Chief Officer, Mrs. Sarah Hayden. I'm on the team. We also have us with this evening our new Reverend the Methodist Chapel, Yan Yan, who's come along to see what goes on, work with us in the future. I'd ask the Reverend Will Gray to take the prayer for our meeting, please. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Um, just waiting to be here again with you all. It feels like a little while since I've seen you all. Can I pray for you? Is that all right? And then we'll leave you to it and you can have your. <laughs> Uh, joyful discussion then about the rest of the evening. <laughs> so, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this council. I thank you for each person, for the gifts that each one of them brings, for the ways in which you have called each one of them. And I pray this evening you would bless each of them. You would bless these conversations. We thank you for this town that we serve, for the people in it. And we pray in this room tonight, would you guide and lead and would you bless each person? In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Bless you all. Enjoy your evening. Thank you all. You're doing a runner, are you now? <laughs> Who's that? Oh, chap. Sit down. Oh, we've got two. We've got one. Yan the new one. Yeah. Yes, please do. So, Councillors, if I may, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to the Biddulf Town Council YouTube page. The aim is that decision making should be transparent and in the public domain, which will involve more of our community and local democracy. By being in this council chamber, you are consenting to being recorded for your image to be uploaded onto YouTube. The images and sound may be used for training purposes. Any views expressed are the speaker's own and do not necessarily reflect the view of Biddulph Town Council. Please view the guidance on recording in public meetings policy if you need more information. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chief Officer, and welcome you all back. We've had a short break. I think we're suitably recharged. I hope so, anyway. Um, right, we start off then the agenda. Uh, at 21 is public participation. Have we got a public participation? Well, and stuff to police. Time to rock and roll, my friend. <laughs> so, I hope you're all well. Good evening. Uh, from the last meeting, not a lot's changed from our <coughs> view. I pulled some figures for the last 12 months uh, regarding antisocial behaviour and crime and the Bill of Area. Uh, the statistics show that ASB in Biddle is down by 38%. That's a decrease from 332 incidents to 207. So that's a decrease of uh, 125 incidents. All areas of middle have reported drops in uncertain payment, with the middle north showing a 20% decrease and the west showing a 68% decrease. Uh, that's the north down from 30 yeah, incidents to 24. And west down to 28 to 9. Uh, crime in Biddulph has uh, increased in the last 12 months. Uh, that's from uh, that's increased by 30 percent. That's from uh, well, since March, we've seen Biddulph has dropped from 118 reported crimes in March to 69 in August. So that's almost a decrease of 50 percent in crime in the last eight months. Uh, so. We're, we're up and down, and obviously we expect the summer holidays and the, the warm weather that we've had in space, I wouldn't say we've had it for the whole of the holidays. We expect it to fluctuate a little bit and increase, decrease. Uh, but as for in the local area, we still have some use on bail with curfew. Uh, and there's a few things I'm trying to set up. So I'm trying to look at setting up a monthly meeting with the councillors, but Charlie. Suggested last time. I'm just working around that, like we're just going to be the best team soon, but which ever suits everybody. And uh, the surgery surgeries 
with bubbles and stuff to come along too. We've the increased the amount of down the group, still we can do more in the local area. Uh, and maybe across at Sage, which is obviously a lot of the issues before we start around Fire Street. But other than that, from, from last time, not, not a lot has changed from our perspective. Thank you very much. Um, we'll be Councillor Sons. Thank you, Mr Mayor. A couple of questions. Can you tell us the progress on the um, Middle Youth and Community Zone? Um, I know you've alluded to the fact that youths are on bail, but I don't think that they're on bail for that particular instance. So I don't think we've got any further off with the investigation. I will be honest. Personally, I don't know, but I can go away and find out uh, and see where it's at. And obviously, uh, there might be some information that we can't divulge, but I can go away and find out who's dealing with it, find out the information and come back to you. Right. And also with the instance at... Um, Nipersley um, Victoria football ground as well with the changing rooms being broken into there and the butty van that was on the Tunstall Road um, football fields as well. What, what's the progress update with those three? Where are we at with the investigation? Just so that's the youth club, the butty the youth van, club, the butty van and yeah. Nipersley fix. Yeah. yeah. And also there's been a space of instance within the last sort of 10 days at... Um, Church Road Park, where some of the soft tarmac has been ripped up um, and some kids, quite a lot of littering and some kids causing a nuisance up there. So that's just within the last 10 days. So if patrols could be increased or you could have a nose up round there quite regularly. We'd appreciate that. Yeah, that is part of our, we have what we call the red route, uh, which is a route that us local officers have to check throughout the week whilst we're at work. That is a Okay. I wasn't aware of that incident, but I've seen any being reported specifically to us, but I will go away and double check and I'll pass it on to other local officers to keep that right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Councillor Jones, Councillor Jackson. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Thanks for coming along tonight. Um, cars parked on pavements. We really stuffle with it a bit more. Now, I don't have a particular issue with cars. It's illegal. I don't really have an issue with it other than it damages the pavements. But when people park on the pavement and leave no room for pedestrians, I saw a lady on New Street a couple of days ago coming on New Street with a pet with a bus share, had to go onto the road to get past the car that was parked along New Street because of that this much space between walls. Now, I don't understand the logic. We, and I, I, I'm sure we'll all admit we all do it sometimes because we think we'll leave a bit more space for the cars. But this is a road that's quite narrow, lots of cars parked there anyway. And I just wish that occasionally somebody would get a ticket because it needs to back to a type of inconsiderate parking needs to be sorted. And it's a road that patrol cars come across there tons of times a day and they, and they just completely ignore it. Completely ignore it. And while I'm on my soapbox, when did it become legal to ride a bicycle on the pavement? I'll be honest with you. The, the legislation around riding bicycles on pavements, roads and stuff, I don't want to give you an answer. No, I'm not expecting you to. I'm just having a rant while I'm stood up. It's not like you. But, you know, when I was a kid, you didn't ride on the pavement. Now it seems to be better go, you know, adults, and they just ride on the pavement. You know, so, and, and I've seen coppers just ignore them. You know, at least don't even speak to them. So this is sort of policing that people want. They want people to engage, talk to engage with that type of thing. And at least just say, don't do it. But they're just doing a blind eye all the time. So thanks for coming again. Rant over. Um, if you <laughs> take back my comments, I'd be very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor <laughs> Jackson. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, pleased about the antisocial behaviour figures showing a down a downward trend. Is it too <coughs> yet for the police to evaluate um whether the work that the outreach youth work <coughs> in town with the young people that's had perhaps a positive effect on those figures or not? Again, <clears throat> I don't want to give you an answer straight away because I'd feel you no answer at the minute, the, the wrong answer. Uh, I believe I believe we should be at a point now where we could see statistically if it's healthy. Uh, I do believe I saw an email not long ago that the youth outreach team had been given some extra funding because it was working so well. Uh, so I'd like to say it, it is helping us and assisting us in decreasing the, the space of antisocial behaviour in the, the uh, area. But statistically, 
I'll uh, I'll go away and try and find out. Yeah. Yeah, uh, thank you. It, it's just it, what you've actually said is, it, is why I asked the question. If if it is if it can be proved that there is a link that that's a helping the antisocial behaviour stuff, then it makes it a little bit easier to get the funding. To carry to carry that sort of work on, so well, that's that's pleasing. Now those figures carry on on that uh, downward trajectory. Yes, so so do I. The other questions, Rod. I'll ask you: Do you still use what they call a crime pattern analysis machine? Do you still use what sort of crime pattern analysis machine? I don't think it's called that anymore. Um, well, we, use, we use something which we call. Uh, the brain, basically, and it's it's the brain. Uh, it, it's what we refer to as the brain. Yeah, it's like the, it, it's the equivalent to the police national computer, basically, and that records all the statistics of what's reported in and how it's logged. Because obviously, everything has given its own antisocial behaviour to crime, what crime, and it will record how many of them are coming in and how many like uh, what the results of that crimes are. So it, it's. I'm guessing it's going to be the same system, just a different name. Mm. So, if you've got this machine which sort of points to hotspots, which is what we're really talking about, yeah. have you got the resources to attend to these hotspots as a prevention point of view? So, mm -hmm. I think I mentioned in the last meeting, mm -hmm. uh, we've had an increase of PCSOs locally for Biddle, myself being one included, and... Uh, it's been another of another shift. So now we've got a full team of local PCSOs, and we've also had a, another officer join the bid of local team. So now there's a full team on each shift of PCSOs and police officers. So we can keep a better eye on the hotspots and help decrease uh, the repetition of certain behaviour in the hotspots. Yeah. So in the, in the month of, <coughs> excuse me, in the month of August, Presumably, the crime has come down. Yeah. Or, well, people are not reporting the crime because you're on holiday and things like this. So, does that sort of get fed into your way of doing things? I will be completely honest with you. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's above my head. It's how it's all phoned in, how it's recorded, and that's how it goes onto the system. I just get what's released from the system in the statistics. Yeah, yeah. Well, Personally, all I can do is thank you very much for your honesty. You know, it's a, it's a rare commodity. I'd, uh, I'd prefer to be honest and tell me something incorrect. Absolutely. So, I end up with the that. So. so if there's no further questions, then thank you very much for your attendance. Yeah. If you wish to stop, please do. Otherwise, do a runner. Unfortunately, I am being Thank you very much for hearing me out. I hope you all have a lovely night. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Uh, the next one is Staffordshire County Council representative. We've got two. <laughs> yeah. Thanks very much. And as I say, thank you to all those who turned up earlier to discuss various subjects. I hope we don't reduce the amount of questioning we have uh, later on. So thank you very much for turning up. I expect we almost spent an hour and a bit talking to uh, quite a few of you, uh, particularly Adrian and others. Uh, so thank you very much for turning up and going through those issues with us. Um, not much has happened. Um, the only thing that's really been continued since the last meeting is the health committee. For some reason, we've had three of those. Uh, we've been looking at the operating plan and performance, uh, et cetera, of the new integrated care board and how they're going to measure their success. There's quite a lot of work still to do um, in relation to looking at how they're going to uh, present their dashboard and everything else for us. Uh, we've also had the adult social care the pressures and the, the requirements from those in terms of getting their needs assessed and things like that as well. So we're fairly on top of those two areas because for those that don't know, the, the social care side of things is our biggest expenditure of the County Council uh, in terms of crew and, and uh, people who we employ, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the only other thing I would like to say in terms of health at the moment is that COVID and flu um, vaccinations are out there at the moment please get those if that can go out uh, from the town council as well that would be fantastic uh, we do have some meetings coming up for audit in the council a full council meeting and a few others i'm sure um we can cover that later uh, from Nigel DB. um i do have a letter in relation to the rack situation at schools um i won't necessarily read it all out now i can send it to um 
Sarah to send it round. Uh, I'll just read one paragraph at the moment of it all, saying that uh, we now have 61 schools needing further investigation. With the uh, recent change in approach by uh, the Department of Education, we have accelerated the programme, and these sites will be surveyed prior to the October half term. Some follow-up investigations may be necessary where intrusive investigation by drilling is required. Where necessary, this will follow shortly after the initial survey. So far, we have not been advised by the uh, Department of Education that any maintained schools in Staffordshire are included in the list of those schools nationally that will have to close over to the use of RAC in their construction. So that's the current situation. Obviously, there's still 61 schools to go, but I thought it was important for you to, to know that with all the schools around here as well. Um, in terms of other areas, it's been quite quiet. There's nothing from the libraries at the moment or from the Family Improvement Board or anything like that. Um, there is some uh, movement on some flood action things which aren't in the rest of my division, are not necessarily here. Um, had a quick conversation uh, with Anthony at the zone. Um, there is a bit more work to do than they had originally thought. Some of the brickwork, uh, or rather the cement holding the blocks together at the top of the wall has, has in fact been damaged by the fire. So they're gonna have to remove some of the blocks and uh, re reset them and re cement them in place before they can do the rendering. Um, so I just thought I'd let you know that as well. So there's a slight delay on that furnishing at the moment. DHP, we had lots of that uh, earlier on in the day. Um, the grass along Conway Road, I've had a report in and sent that in. Park Lane, and I think that's a, it's a joint thing between us at the moment, is still ongoing. Uh, they've done some of the repairs, but nowhere near enough. And it's slightly annoying because it was over, well, my number one on my list to try and get that Park Lane area um, at the top end uh, repaired as best we could uh, during this extra highways money that is, is available. And, and hopefully that will be done before October 31st. And then finally, grants in terms of the environment grant and the community grant, we've had a, a warning on the community grant. Grants uh, this time round need to be in and successfully completed uh, by October 31st. I would like to at least to have two more uh, grant applications come forward within the <coughs> area. Um, or even more. Um, I just need to try and contact those places. I know some of us work with the bowling club. I wanted to kind of have a quick chat with them sometime to see if there's anything else we can do. And I was going to go and have a chat with Anthony, but he's still recovering from his hip. So hopefully I'll get hold of him and may, maybe find someone up there that he would like to support as well. If any of you got any ideas, please let me know. Um, and I think that's it. I'll leave it to, there we are. Is that a record? Yeah. There thank we you. go. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Has anyone got into it? Oh, yes. Well, oh, dear, go. go on, Jill. Now, it's just, I'm sure you discussed this earlier, but for the public record, certainly, because hopefully people will look back, I think the biggest complaint in Biddleford at the moment is the road going down towards um, Brownlees, Brindley Ford, at the very bottom yeah. before you get into Stoke on Trent. Horrendous. Um, what, since I've been away, it's been patched. Obviously, the issue with the water is still running. So you know that the Duchy of Lancaster owns that land, so you need to get in touch with the King. Um, but can you give us an update as, as to what on earth the plan is for that? Because that's I think that's the most complained about bit, bit of road at the moment in Biddle. So. It's sort of halfway between the two of us. My, my problem with that one, to some extent, is that the water, although it comes from our side, to some extent, down the very edge of what, the bit of land that SMDC owns and lives the border, most of the damage is actually on the Stoke side, further down, and not on our side. But so uh, the wardens and the county council just say that they try to put pressure on others or have that permission from Stoke to go in and do the job if they if the Stoke don't want to do it. So it's, it's a bit of a, you know, pointing the fingers in both directions. So I will we'll try our best. We'll see what I think. Nigel's got try your best because that's the the that's biggest it. gripe it the is, at the I, minute. I drive over it every time I come it's in. It's horrific. So. It is, it's going to cause an accident as well because you swerve onto the right as you're coming down. Oh, the road, I, yeah, you swerve onto the right hand side of the road, and there's a slight yeah. bend, and it will cause yes, an accident. When, when Ian was unfortunately, you know, as the county council, I supported because I supported both sides of the road. I said the, the, the ice uh, damage, and they managed to come and stop it for a bit. Yeah. It's just started up again now. If you can just uh, add add weight to that, one of the issues is is that it's a strategic route. And there is a there is a recognition that it needs a, a significant capital yes. injection to put it right. Now, when that work is done, it's very hard to foresee the A five two seven not being closed for a significant period of time. I think the reality is is that 
works are done in a manner to try and keep the A527 open because it's the main link into the stoke on trent the motorways in, in the south, so it becomes a problem. The particular issue we've had with this summer is the continual drainage of water, which goes off, so it keeps that tarmac wet. So the, so the situation of taking the surface off and then resurfacing when there's a constant flow of water is proven impossible. So what they've done as an interim is they've overfilled to hopefully sort of plug the gap as it goes. And as of today, they've, the, if anybody's driven down there, there's actually temporary traffic lights down there. Because um, one of the things which they were considering doing, and it takes a degree of in investigation, is to see if they can actually improve the drainage underground to take some of the water off before it reaches there. And I think it's a, it's it's partly ut uh, repairs on the old utility patches because it's mainly the utility patch repairs which have failed, but it's partly an investigation as well to see if they can actually improve the drains to stop the amount of water going down there so they can do a more permanent repair. But there is a recognition at county that it is a strategic re requiring significant capital. I think I don't think there's a lot which we can do this year other than keep patching. But I think for next year, both of us collectively have got to lobby to see if we can really get the work done. The irony is, is that in the old days, you know, a few years ago, the problem was the capacity of the drains, the ones which go across from the butterfly yeah, garden, that so that no that's been improved water. significantly. So now it's surface water drainage. So it is improving, but it just doesn't look like at this moment in time. Doing that few years Thank, you. Thank you very much. Councillor Mayor. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, to both of our district councils, this is... Uh, county? County, sorry, county. I'm a district council. I forgot the county councils, and sorry, I'm competing with the deputy mayor now on lack of voice as well, so this is going to be a challenge. No problem. Okay. Uh, sorry, yes. Uh, you made reference to maintained schools. Now, obviously, the majority of schools are not maintained schools. They are academies and they are academy tr uh, and forwarded academy trusts. Now, my concern, it goes outside of the buildings here, they actually go to the children that are within them. Now, those children may be in academies and academy trusts that may run themselves as private businesses, but they are in the wardship of the council. So what are the council doing to enforce the same level onto the academies and the academy trusts as they are within the maintained schools? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Uh, what, what it says in here is that... Um, there's a 405 schools in Staffordshire in total of 126 who are in the maintained area. So that was before I read out the, the paragraph. It was at the, at the moment. Um, they are the same. Please be assured the safety of pupils and school staff is our top priority. And we have also written to our 278 academy schools, offering them advice and support. If any of you or with us have questions, please do not hesitate to get in touch. And that's from Jonathan Bryce, the cabinet member. But Councillor Jackson. Uh, yeah, sort of on, on the same same um, subject, really. Um, when the rat thing first came out, it was, it was highlighted that some, at, at least 5% of schools had not responded to the letter that the government had, had sent out. Have you had any indication from officers uh, how many schools in Staffordshire are in that sort of 5% grouping? No. No, not, at, not at the moment. They, 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 useful to try and find that. Well, at the moment, there's no schools on the list. Precisely, but they're not aware of any schools that haven't sent it back. That's something that they're still saying that we're still waiting to hear back from. Okay, touch wood. Um, you know, those 61 will be okay, there won't be too much work to do. Okay, I think there was another I'll keep in touch with you, Stephen. I think there's another hand up early on, was there not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter because Nigel, all right, thank you very much. Yeah. Any more questions? And then right, now it's Nigel's. Thank you. Thank you. Right, thank you. So covering the uh, other things, just touching on the way we organised it earlier on today, is that uh, me and Keith are usually invited by Sarah to discuss issues around, you know, town projects uh, to drive them forward. And we've, we've agreed to start meeting at four o'clock so we could have an hour with Sarah to go through anything which wants uh, dining up. But that gives us an opportunity between five and six uh, if anybody wants to discuss with the county representatives anything in detail, then it does give, give us an opportunity to go through on that. That doesn't negate, obviously, doing the public participation, but it keeps it, it keeps it relatively tight and onto newsworthy things. There's three things second to what Keith raised, which I want to raise. The first thing, and it applies for the district as well, is the importance that if you have got any issues 
of using the reporting forms and the reporting systems, either the, the app through uh, my staff or, or going through the website uh, through the, uh, as opposed to emailing or asking a question. The reason is that gives a reference and that reference creates a job because the jobs are completed by subcontractors, whether it be Amy or whether it be Norse or whether it be AES. And the thing is, all those jobs need to be logged so they can go through a costing system and obviously be paid for. So they will not be lost in the system and you will get attention. What you can do is follow that up with an email to me, Keith, or in the district councils, states the district councils, with a reference number and comment so that can be chased up. So that's important, like when you report a pothole, thank you very much for reporting the pothole. Here's the link to report it as well. And I'll let me have the reference to what I'll make notes. It's not being lazy. It's making sure it's logged and never forgotten and never off the system. And that goes for a wish list as well. Oh, it would be a good idea to have an extra side here. You can log it through other, and then it won't fall off the system and it will be reviewed at the next face-to-face -face DHB meeting and then we can prioritise and, and debate it and see where we can put it in the system. So it isn't a fob off, it's actually a way of making sure that jobs don't fall off and disappear off the system. The other two things which I want to mention is that Staffordshire County Council as a tier one authority uh, has been awarded in principle the funding for the rollout of EV charging points. It's a, a uh, initiative called LEVI, which stands for Local Electric Vehicle Implementation Points, they what LEVI P. Uh, and that gives us a reasonably large amount of money to actually start a rollout of EV charging points. And it's something which they distribute a little bit like the uh, uh, EFU Disabled Facilities Grants, which comes into county and then gets distributed to boroughs and districts. That's going to be distributed to boroughs and districts to actually put EV charging points for residents within the urban and rural area. And it gives a significant amount of central government funding. Our Staffordshire County Council have got to submit a business plan just to get it absolutely confirmed, but that is really a formality now. It's been awarded. Uh, we've also been awarded as a charge one, which means the first payments which go out. Staffordshire County Council will receive those first payments. So we're looking at starting the implementation at County and therefore at Staffordshire Moorlands towards the back end of 2024, which sounds a long way away, but you know, with the with the planning and the traffic orders mm -hmm. and the roadways associated with it, that is actually quite quite quick. So that will put EV charging points in Biddleth. It should put EV charging points in Biddleth Moor. Geraldton, Leek, Cheadle, Longmer, wherever. Now they will be residence-based residence charging. So they will tend to be the, the, the lower kilowattage, but it's so that it's certainly not classed as the destination charging. The idea is as people come, if they use those as residents overnight, or the people who come to spend time within the town, within the area where they where they stay, be not the ones which are the super fast where people sit, have a cup of coffee and then disappear and don't spend any money in their locality. Because at the end of the day, if you think about it, we can't get the county council, the district council doesn't have petrol stations. You know, so we, we have to get that balance right between servicing the residents and servicing people who are just flying to and charge and in the private sector heavily involved in that. The other thing we have to want to mention is that, again, working in cooperation with the uh, boroughs and districts, is that uh, the County Council are working on a local nature recovery strategy, which from the district point of view, is we're branding that as a plan for nature, which without going into too much detail, the main purpose of the strategies is to identify locations to create or improve habitat, most likely to provide the greatest benefit for nature and the wider environment. So there's going to be an awful lot of documentation, an awful lot of work done in the next over, over the next seven years to actually enhance the natural environment, which will also help us to meet our climate change uh, uh, targets with regard with regards to uh, carbon sequestration, whether that be tree planting, soil recovery, or peat bog and wetland recovery. So there's an awful lot of background work which has been going on. Uh, it will be presented as the plan for nature to the uh, community scrutiny group next Monday, very much off the, off the press, but it fits in with the county-wide strategy of making sure that there's a common approach 
in each of the districts and boroughs within the county. So I think, well, I'm confident over the course of the next two years, you'll see significant change within our green spaces and within our uh, verge management policies, which fits in both with making sure that proper maintenance is seen to be done, but also with an emphasis on nature, on nature recovery and biodiversity. And the final thing which, I, which I've got to say, the conversation which we had with Sarah, I have got some funds left in my uh, community fund. I've tried to give that to uh, Middle Works and Together Initiatives. So we've uh, agreed a figure which is available with Sarah, and that will hopefully be divvied out uh, within the division. And it's working on working on the same for the uh, uh, Middle East area, so that uh, we actually support with a reasonable amount of money the uh, Middle Works, Works Together group to make sure there's an even spread throughout the town and including Biblethor and uh, uh, the outline areas. So uh, hopefully that will get uh, distributed in the time and distributed successful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Jones and Councillor Garvey. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, just one for you to chase, Nigel, if you would. Uh, I'll dispute with Councillor Salt that the most annoying set of potholes in Biddle is in Billy Four. The most annoying set of potholes in Biddle is on New Street by the entrance to my street. I just, you have to go on the wrong side. You know where we are. Yes. Uh, as of yesterday, at least, they haven't been done. But although there were some filling pots that was in use to yesterday, but they didn't do that. They're all nicely painted round now, and I've been for that a month. And so perhaps you could give them a no charge of they, they are due to be done by the 31st of October. Uh, I've got a DHP meeting uh, on the 26th, I think it is, of September. And it is the priority to chase because they have been ticking off around, around the town. Uh, and they've actually done an extra one, which I hope the people of Middlefield don't listen to that. The the one which was on my reserve list was actually Wedgwood Lane and Halls Road. And I know they've done some repairs on Wedgwood Lane and Halls Road. So I was a little bit surprised that they've done the reserve list before they did the primary list. The only thing I can think of, I mean, Councillor Flunder would discuss this, is whether they timed the Park Lane and New Street one together because they have got to come back to do that. And... Um, I won't say much in defence of county council because I'm on obviously the position benches, but the problems which we've got with a lot of these repairs are failed utility repairs, and that's certainly the case in New Street. And one of the things which I really want to push, as all councils want to push, is making sure that when the utility companies dig a road up, you put it back properly. You don't just skimp and go because it's just not lasting. If I may, Mr. Mayor, just come back slightly. I, I don't speak anything you're saying. I know you're doing your best to get fixed. What does slightly irritate me is the way they're categorised. I mean, they, they're not category one, whatever it is. They're not high priority because they're not deep enough. Mm. Because there's a string of them. And because they're on a blind bend, mm. it means you have to cross onto the wrong side of the road on a blind bend. And that really makes it a cat one for me. And I just wish that, that you know, perhaps you put some representation to maybe get them. You know, really categorise and they altered a bit. But I, know, I know you know your best. I'm you. So, it's just quickly going back on that. I absolutely agree. And a case in point is that very annoying one, which has now been repaired on Woodhouse Lane on the sort of switch bend towards the bottom. And it was classed as category three. I begged and begged and begged and begged till eventually they did it because they were sick of me. But they said it's category three, doesn't need repairing. I said the reality of it is, is people see it and the perception is it's deep and they move to the side. So you're absolutely right. And I do agree. Thank you. Councillor Garvey. Thank you, Chair. Um, first of all, first of all, thank you very much in terms of your donation from the community fund. Um, working through, back through your point, and I'd welcome your uh, nature recovery strategy, but I'd request, could you provide an update on that and progress to the environment and climate change working group so we're fully aware of what's going on, please? Um, going to your EV charging points, um, I'm aware that there are grants from SNDC and the, the uptake of those grants has been very, very poor. So are the plans in, in, uh, in place to try and promote and improve the uptake of the funding that's available? And could you share that with us at some point? Yes. Uh, firstly, with regards to the uh, local nature recovery strategy or the, or the plan for nature with regards to tax malls, it, it is actually going through scrutiny at the moment. So it's it's not quite hot off the press because it hasn't got to the press, but it, it hopefully will be approved by, uh, it'll be passed off by scrutiny and then it'll go to, to county. But all the bricks are nicely lined up, ready to be uh, ready to be put, put together. And I think 
when we come to the Envio meeting on Thursday, uh, we can start to discuss some of the potential projects which we can do in Biddle, which hopefully I'll be able to announce some external funding for as well at the same time. So that is, that is the uh, plan on that. And your second point was the... The, the EV charging... The, well, the third point is well. the, the EV charging points, the very poor uptake for yeah, the SMDC brands. How, yeah. how are you going to uh, improve upon that with this new funding available from the county? Well, the, the funding available from the county will be actually... The, 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 the locations will be decided on at district level as, as part of uh, uh, as part of the capital strategy with the, with the assets team. Uh, it won't just be on car parks. It, the, the idea is, is that there's charging points available but then I think it's, it's, it's a seven minute walk from somebody's house. We've got to have a charging point within seven minutes walk or some around that range. range. So the, the, there is a heat map very similar to what the police use to actually pinpoint the locations where we need to put the charging points. And then obviously there'd be a slight movement to, to, to find the location which is convenient, convenient to that. And the, the final question actually was, is um, you mentioned about reporting things through various electronic systems. Is there a non-electronic system for those people that don't have access to electronic systems to be able to report these issues? Is there a paperwork system? And if there is, how does it work and where is it located? How does one access it? You can still phone up and they will give you a reference. Both of the county, the county open between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. And the district is, is open. I think it's between 9.30 and 3.30 at this moment in time. So you can't, you still can phone up and they still should be giving you a reference. Obviously, if you can have access to the computer, it allows you to give a lot more information, a lot more pertinent information and get, get a reference back straight away. But there are the answers. We were, we were looking at it to corporate uh, review this morning uh, at County, and you'd be surprised how few actually come through now, either by either by letter, believe it or not, or by, um, by telephone. The majority are by email, and it's really trying to move the email ones, where people have obviously used an electronic device, into the reporting system, because straight away you get feedback with the reference. So it's really to try and... Not try and, you know, if people want to use email, fine, but try and sort of move the email column into the report form column because straight away you've got access to that feedback loop. And that's the reason I wanted to stress it today. So email to complain becomes report to complain. Follow up if you want by an email to say, I put this report in reference and I'm not happy is absolutely fine. But well, that reference logs a job for what are subcontractors who were paid on jobs. Remember, both the district and the county, there's no real direct, um, there isn't some social care, but when it comes to highways, when it comes to verges, when it comes to signs and all the sort of problems, there's no direct employees. So it has to be a system where that, that job is logged and a job card is raised. Right, the next two uh, speakers, uh, Chris and then Jill, but before we call them, do you want to drink of water or something? You know? I'm shuffling a bit. Oh, well, yeah, that's some. Um, Concerned about you, you, yeah. Oh, Chris, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just in terms of the communications, Nigel, I, I'm, I'm not aware of what the system is at the county, but certainly at the district, we, we had uh, a meeting last week on you know, what you know our priorities are going to be for the forthcoming next two or three years. Uh, and the district council of um, it's going live within a matter of weeks where we've got now got a reporting system where if any issue is raised by a councillor from a resident, there's a, a proper timeline. It gets sent directly to the head of that relevant department who then has to contact the relevant officer to, to, to deal with that. So it should be a lot more effective from, from our perspective as councillors Whereas instead of you, you make a phone call and then the sort of the, the trail goes dead, we've now got a system where you've got a timeline on so we can chase the authority back up. Now, hopefully that's going to go live, as I say, in the next two weeks. I think I'm getting on the pilot route. Uh, so it should, it should improve the communications. <laughs> Certainly from residents, I think there should be a direct, direct line where the residents can make complaint to the, the authority, but also then through the councillors who then 
you know, register it as well. So hopefully that system will 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 improve, you know, for for residents making it better. Because uh, and one of the points we did raise at the meeting, the priority setting meeting, was about you know having human interaction, which is going back to what Jim was saying. You know, with a lot of people haven't got internet, a lot of people haven't got computers. So therefore, their only way of getting in touch with the authority is via the phone. And, and that's something that we are going to prioritise. So we're making sure that we're going to have enough staff to, you know, answer the calls on behalf of the residents. Uh, so, that, you know, they, they don't just get an answer phone or whatever. It, 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 there's a proper line of communication and a timeline so we can chase it up if there's any issue. Yeah, I'm sure. Yep. Well, thank you for that, Chris, because I found what you said very, very enlightening. And uh, I think, quite frankly, the district council will go in the right direction. Change. Jill. Yeah, just a quick point regarding the nature strategy. Uh, my mother in law lives on. Um... Oh, my God, it's gone out of my head. Oh, 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 oh. Anyway, somewhere off Lime Side. And the um, grass grows really high, it has been doing. I think it's just because they do reduce cuts and probably for the environment. But to a lot of people, it seems like that they can't be bothered. So when you're doing the nature recovery strategy, I think publicity and communicating to the public is really important because at the moment they think stuff's not being cut because there's not enough money or, you know, you can't be bothered or no one knows what they're doing. But it actually might be for a very good reason in terms of biodiversity. <laughs> they have to communicate that to residents who don't know. So that's just something to bear in mind. And the second thing was... Um, regarding um, the infrastructure for EV ch charging points. So, for example, my nearest place to go and charge my car, if we had an electric car, would be on Wharf Road. But for some people down Halls Road, it might end up being um, Halls Road car park and an EV charging point installed on there, which raises a question that um, we've got on the agenda later on for reckon amenity that might come up about the locking of car parks. In which case, we wouldn't want to lock car parks if we want residents to go and charge the cars on car parks. So, for example, Biddle Grange there might be an EV charging point on the car park there that closes at dusk. So these are things to think about if we are thinking about putting EV charging points in public car parks. We don't want the car parks locked. Thank you. Thank you for some very valid points there, Jill. <laughs> if I can just come back on that first point, certainly from the District Council point of view, one thing which we have got, a, a tacit agreement on is that if we do something different, which one person will say fantastic biodiverse, another person will say neglect. Either way, we put a correct sign with branding to explain what we're doing. And one of the one of the things which we stress in, and it's going to be in the green spaces and verges policy, staff Jamal's, is that there will always be a threshold strip mode so none of this encroachment onto the pavement so it actually does look like somebody's made a decision but that'll be backed up with signage it'll be a big sign but it'll be dun, dun, dun. this is being done because you know that's good yeah uh, yes yeah, thank you mr Matt. basically on, on the car park just the decision i'm, I'm obviously to welcome money from the government for the uh electric charging points but has that decision made the charging points on Wharf Road to go further down the line. Will it make it, that decision? Make, will it actually happen earlier? I, my personal feeling is it'll happen earlier because as much as there was a will from, you know, the previous administration, I'm not saying that as a as a negative. No, it was ready to go. It, well, it was ready to go, but there wasn't really the funding to do it. So the funding in the budget was £200,000. Now, £200,000 sounds an awful lot of money to us as an individual. But when it comes to, to purchasing an EV point and digging the road up and putting the wire in it, I know you're saying there's cabling there, but it's still got the connections. It doesn't really do many, many, many points, to be perfectly honest. So this particular funding, which is going to attract an awful lot of private sector investment because of the way which, which these things worked, is significantly, I don't want to put a figure on it, it's significantly by a factor of hundreds of percent bigger, which actually gives you the, the economy of scale to do it. The other thing about the county approach and having a common approach is it means that you will have the economy of scale about the purchase of the materials, the purchase of the cables, the purchase and the maintenance contracts for the EV charging points themselves. 
So it will be a lot more efficient system. It, there is a degree of bureaucracy, which you can imagine with county, but once that bureaucracy <laughs> has got to the tipping point and we start, it should be a case of like, like shelling peas. And I'm pretty, com pretty confident about that, to be perfectly honest. So what we're looking to do is use the £200,000, which is a relatively small amount of money and will service the uh, lower kilowatt charges, is use that to encourage the, the council employees to change the EV charging by putting EV charging points where the employers need them, like a good employer should be, because I think we can do some we can do something significant with that. And that hopefully will include, you know, putting sites within, within the town hall, so it encourages... Uh, and the, the wider em employees within, within the town hall complex to actually have the confidence to move to EV vehicles because we've got to do this across the board. Thank you. That's so hard. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, you're quite right. Uh, as Lee Yates, the, there wasn't the funding there available from the government. The government were not feeding funding down to districts and boroughs. And uh, one or two boroughs like uh, Derbyshire Dales made terrible mistakes. Uh, they went in a county-wide scheme there and the take-up in Bakewell was absolutely minuscule in comparison. Um, but the problem is that you're right with the slow charges, they can work on the existing cabling. Right. If there's cabling nearby, they can work on that. Fast charges need three phase. So therefore, at £1,000 a metre, it can be very expensive to put fast charges in. So you've got to have a lot of turnover of people to make it viable. So it looks as if this new countywide government-backed scheme could be quite useful. Uh, because I think that the amount of money the district had at the time um, would be, what, about two, two, two and a half years ago, would have just about done... Um, a couple of charges in Wolf Road, a couple of charges in Tate Street uh, in Cheadle, and a few round Morland's House. And that would have been it. It wouldn't have been able to do any more. Uh, so I welcome this. It's very, very useful. But I know, having you know been involved in, in that sort of thing, how difficult it is. And the economy of scale will make it far easier, because hopefully they'll be able to employ a, a generic contractor that will be able to, to do that. Um, so the price wouldn't be X number of pounds per unit. It would be minus so many thousand pounds per unit and with a, a net and Y. So uh, encourage that well and truly. Thank you. Thank you. Alan, shall we cancel over? All right. I haven't said to anything personally. Right. Um, these are slow charges, yes, and they're, and they're for public use. Is that correct? They are not fast charges, but I wouldn't call them slow charges as in residential charges. Right. What's the security on them then? If I, and I won't, if a person goes and plugs in, presumably they are paying for that service, how secure is that link? I mean, it's it's a classic advert, isn't it, where somebody comes on and unplugs it and and, and uh, people die. But um, will it be secure for the person who is actually has actually paid for and receiving a charge? How do you find it? Are you saying safe or secure? Secure. I would expect so, but uh, I haven't got the exact answer to that. But that's something which has crossed my mind. I've, I've I, I'm not aware of any issues of willful damage on charging infrastructure within the UK. I'm not talking about the time. Talking about somebody who has paid to charge their vehicle and then somebody else comes along and says, oh, I'm up that, and plugs in instead. What steals it? What's the security? I honestly don't know the answer to that. It's a good question. I will uh, question. Give me a quick answer. Well, you give me a quick answer. On a lot of cars, once you lock your car, it actually locks the charging point into the car. You can't remove it until the car's unlocked to go. Ah. Yeah. I can, I can, I can imagine enough. as well that as soon as it's unplugged, yeah. it will massively it's stop, off. which is off. So you yeah. can't have a situation of... Uh, yeah, but the thing is, if you're expecting your car to be charged when when, when you come back to it and somebody else is charged... Well, the charge, you can't do that. Right. I don't know why. Yeah, I'm going to speak. 
Yeah, that's, uh, that's, I was just going to say that as the owner of an electric car, I can tell you what happens if you plug it in, you put your brake pad in, it charges. If somebody unplugs it, it stops charging. And if you plug it in again, it won't carry on charging. That's how it works. That's what I was, that's what I was wondering about security in the context of, of damage. Because well, While I'm on my feet, I thought this was supposed to be a presentation by county councillors and a few quick questions. I seem to have turned it into a debate. Well, is there any other questions before we get anything out? Oh, right. I'd like to thank both county councillors. Yeah, you've done a lot of work. And uh, it, to me, it's been very informative, not frankly, um, particularly you, Chris. Um, right, we move on to the next item, which is apologies. Have we any apologies? I think Councillor Rushton must still be apologies. Yes, I, I was still by the door. Apologies. Right, so they'll be recorded. Uh, we're not item 23 <laughs> declaration of interest. A is the uh, de declare any disclosure, pecuniary interests, and dispensations. Has any councillor, Councillor Rogers? Yes, on the expenses, from travel expenses to make way. Thank you. Thank you. Item B to declare any other disclosable interests. No. Right, thank you very much for that. We'll move on. It's uh, 24, which are the minutes. To approve and sign the minutes for the Town Council meeting held on uh, Tuesday, the 11th of July, 23. With it, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much. To me, to yeah, by all means. Uh, the Deputy Mayor would usually read these, I think, so if you're happy for me to go through them, because it's Lafferty's voice. That's what I've done for. I think that's... Would possibly be helpful. Yeah, but, oh. uh, so we've got the town council uh, meeting from Tuesday the eleventh. Uh, it was is present and those in attendance. Uh, Eleven is public participation. We've got police uh, and county council representatives. <coughs> All these apologies. Thirteen declarations of interest. 14 minutes, there were five sets of minutes there that were approved or agreed. 15 was Mayor's Communications. 16, Standing Agenda Items in relation to Town Council Assets, Health and Safety Activities and the Biddle Works Together Project. 17, to receive an update on outside body meetings attended in the past month. Uh, 18, to consider hosting a group of Staffordshire Mall's clerks in the Town Hall, share practice. 19 uh, A and B were accounts for finance. Oh, and C was grants. Confidential item on the back, item 20. Well, thank you very much. Well, I have a proposal that we accept the corners of the by Councillor Hart, always seconded by, by Councillor Jones. Right, I'll just uh, move on to the next one. Does it favour? Sorry? Oh, yes, all in favour, please. I see that there's none against, so or none abstentions. We'll take it. Um, B, to receive the minutes of the recreation and amenities on the 11th of July. I would like to move those, please, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Uh, if again, if everyone's happy, I'll read through those. Um, for those who are present, those in attendance, 11 apologies. 12 declarations of interest, 13 minutes. Oh, Councillor Redfern. Councillor Redfern, sorry. Yes, I believe I was present at that meeting, but my attendance hasn't been recorded. Okay, sorry. Okay, fine. Um, 14, consider amendments to burials. 15, to receive a presentation on Springfield Road management arrangements. 16 to receive a presentation on butterfly gardens, management arrangements, 17 jobs, jobs for the Lanxman, and 18 to consider land opportunities for the town. Are we at a proposal of that one? <laughs> Councillor Hart, seconder, Councillor Garvey, all in favour of accepting? That's unanimous, thank you very much. Um, item C to receive the minutes of planning committee. Held on the 18th of July. Jim, that's your department, is it? 
Okay, so we'll run through those. Um, present again in attendance, 22 apologies, 23 declarations of interest, 24 minutes, 25 is a standing agenda item in relation to proposed sites for local listings, 26 to receive a verbal update on progress with the neighbourhood plan and neighbourhood development order. 27, to receive an update on Town Council planning applications. 28, is an item requested by Councillor Hawley. 29. Councillor Smith, sorry. Just to note that one of the planning applications um, was for the house that I live in, but I wasn't present when that was discussed because I arrived later on. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor. Uh, 29 is new planning applications. 30 is considering supplementary applications. 31 was new decisions and notices received from the District Council. 32 was appeals, only one of those. Right. Yes. So now, uh, except that the uh, yeah. minutes are correct. The sentence is. Second was Jim. I proposed them, Chair. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, John Redford and second. Yep. All in favour? Yep. Thank you for that. No votes against, I take it. All right. Abstentions? Oh. Sorry to just notice one hand wasn't up. Um, where are we? The next one, D, to receive the Mitch Town and Community on the 18th of July. Uh, present in attendance, number eight, apologies, nine, declarations of interest, ten minutes, 11, to receive an update on the District Council Tourism Strategy Implementation following a meeting on the 22nd of June, 12, to note that D-Day 80 is in 2024. Do councillors wish to be involved in this event? 13, item requested by Councillor Kaziki to consider the removal of the Nipsley Post Box. 14, item requested by Councillor Rogers to agree a date for Christmas Lights Working Group Meeting. 15, item requested by Councillor Yates to consider additional tree planting within the town and ordering trees. Potential <coughs> items. 16, to review the police report on crime prevention in the town centre and to consider next steps. 17, item request, request by Council Salt to receive an update on the station road fountains. 18, item request by Councillor Smith to receive an update on the mosaic project at station road. 19, item request by Council Salt to receive an update on the mining lanterns. And then that's the end that's of it. Thank you very much. Right, we've had a proposal for the Who's the Jim second, did it? So all in favour of accepting the minutes, please. Raise your hands. Right, thank you. Any against? Extensions? Right. The next one is... You're doing very well, by the way. Thank you. Finance. To approve the minutes for the finance strategy. Held on the 25th of July, 23. Ask you to move those minutes, please, Mr. Mayor. Oh, thank you. Okay, present <laughs> in attendance. Six apologies, 27 declarations of interest, 28 minutes. 29, strategic direction. 30, matters, A, B, and C. 31, town councillor grants. 32, policies, A, B, C, D, and E. 33, standing agenda items, A and B. Confidential items, 34, with quotations, that's A, B, 
Yes. E and D. 35, receiving a verbal update on the CCTV provision. 36, considering the outstanding list of district council assets tasks. 37, to consider setting a budget for Christmas celebrations from earmarked reserves. 38, to consider setting a budget for Bill of Works Together projects from earmarked reserves. 39, to receive an update on defibrillator funding by Staffordshire Moors District Council and to approve the allocation of remaining grant funding. 40, to approve a payment for Remembrance Sunday back. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all in favour of accepting them minutes? We have a second aside. Well, do we have a second? All right, Councillor Hart seconded it. All in favour, please raise your hands. Yep, thank you. It was two minutes and then we'll be back on the field. The next item is actually mass communications. But I would like um, to allow, if you'd allow Councillor Rogers to rise to his feet. I believe you have something to say, and I think this is the appropriate time. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Make it very, very brief. Okay. Right, some reports. Well, thank you from Jim Davis, to be quite honest, and myself, about all the effort he was putting on Saturday for the car show. I'd like to thank all the office staff for all their help and support that they put in there and all the volunteers that worked on the day, Marshall, et cetera. Without you all, the day could not have gone forward. That's a thank you from Jim Davis and myself. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amber. I, th I think all councillors will mm -hmm. sort of express their thanks to, to you, um, because you did a hell of a... I mean, you had a sweat on that day. <laughs> um, yeah, I say that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, all right. <laughs> But you did, and you worked really, really hard. Um, I've, I've got to say this. if uh, One or two members of the public have said this, that if there's ever an event going on or anything needs to be done, Wayne is always there. I'm not saying he's getting it right, because that would be too much. <laughs> it's always there. So, Wayne, thank you very much, and long, long may it last. Yeah. Right, Mayor's comes. Not gonna, I haven't listed where I've been because in the case I've left somebody off and then that would be a terrible sin. But consistent, what I've seen consistently throughout all the groups that I've visited is this desire and a genuine desire to care for other people. Um, you know, it, it is overwelming, quite frankly. I mean, I'm, I'm not sort of moved to tears, far from it. But, you know, it, it does grab your uh, tummy and twist it um, and makes you think that these people, they put their heart and soul into looking after folks and generating things for Biddulph, giving Biddulph the right image. Um, and it, I'm, sure, I'm sure previous mayors, you've been around these places, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and long may this last because... Uh, We've got a fantastic set of people in Bill. Um, often we don't accept or recognise these people, but without them, we go down, quite frankly. So, yeah, great set of people. That's it from me. Uh, the next one is standing agenda items. A, to receive... The update of the management of the town council assets. Thank you. Um, uh, I know we've had some discussion about RAC, um, the only one of the buildings that we manage where that's a potential risk for us is this one. Um, I've asked the question of the district council as to whether they have completed an assessment. It is made of concrete and is a 1960s building. So I think there is potential risk. <laughs> Uh, albeit we are on the list for a survey, so we'll wait and see what that comes back with. Um, I have sent some information to you today, which I don't propose to discuss in any great detail because we'll add it to the Town and Community Committee um, agenda for further debate, obviously where we can talk about it in more detail, but there is a new shared prosperity fund uh, pot that has come out in the past few days since I sent this agenda out. 
um, there is some capital funding available for us which might help to support us with our aspirations for the time of frontage. Um, there is a slight error on that uh, the information in that I obviously don't understand the structures in place there. So the information hasn't been to <laughs> the Cabinet, but has been to the separate board, which I thought must report to the Cabinet and seemingly does. So apologies for that. But the, the rest of the information is accurate. So take some time, if you will, and have a read of that over the coming week, and then we can have some more discussions about the pots of money that we might apply for and how we might consider spending the allocations that we have been given so far. So there's some news on that. Um, is that all right? Some yeah, that's thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you. Councillor Smith. Oh, sorry, Councillor Smith. Sorry, Drew. Um, yeah, it was just to see if we'd had an update yet regards the visitor centre um, and obviously with wanting to look at a possible tenant for the visitor centre if we had any further updates. But that's on the agenda for later. <laughs> Okay, so confidential, it's after the yeah. so, Right, fine. so any more questions? No? Right. Uh, to receive an update on health and safety activities, and before Sarah starts, I've got to pay tribute to, to Sarah and, and the rest of the staff for their commitment to uh, to health and safety. Uh, it's something that is very, very re relevant in this day and age, particularly now with the concrete buildings, uh, is it safe to go in them? Uh, so, yeah, thank you, Sarah, and, and, and your staff. Uh, you, you do do a very, very valuable, valuable job. Um, a lot of the work you've done is, you know, you do is unseen. But, you know, we do benefit from it in that we're all still alive. Thank you very much. Right, sorry, that's your bit now. Yeah, I haven't uh, got anything um, much to report there. We've recently done a health and safety audit um, at the visitor centre, obviously we have a partner who operates the cafe there. Um, there are no high risk activities going on there, no issues to bring to your attention. Um, only ever small um, recommendations with our buildings now. So I think we had got one no smoking sign and the recommendation was that we should put them in toilets as well. So we, it's very small low level stuff, which we've made. Um, we've obviously already addressed those. That's that's quite easy for us to do. Uh, today, uh, myself, uh, Margaret and Jody attended um, health and safety uh, management training, um, just, in, that's just in terms of how to manage health and safety in, in terms of our assets and our events and that kind of thing, and then uh, how to deal with, you know, RIDOR and, and all that sort of reporting mechanism. Mm -hmm. So that's been a useful reminder for us. That's been delivered by David uh, from the District Council. Thank you very much, Sarah. Any questions from anyone? Jill? Just, um, it's just triggered something in my brain um, about vaping. So we've, do we have a vaping policy? Because I know that vape, you're not allowed to smoke in indoor places, but I think you are, according to the law, allowed to vape. And I was just wondering if we've got any kind of policy, especially for people that hire the building and things like that. Um, it's not something to discuss now or debate now, but perhaps something for an agenda item in the future under health and safety, maybe. Don't know. Yeah, I think that, that's a very valid point. Um, and I'm sure at a date in the future, Sarah, we, we, we can discuss this. We can. I, I've taken the view that smoking is vaping and smoking. Um, but I'm happy to amend that view if you want. So the signage that we've got is 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 going inside buildings and it says no smoking, no vape. But I, I, am, to, I am happy to have that discussion if you, you think that is changing. I, I'm personally happy with that, but perhaps it should be on the agenda so that we can agree as a council, because I think I think that's important, because some people do vape because it's not illegal to vape indoors. It's not under the same mm. legislation. I so I think it's important to put that as a council together. I think it's important uh, to have that discussion. This, this, if you're sitting on the side of somebody who's vaping, mm. just tick you off. Well, it ticks me off. Anyway, it would, I'm sure. So I think that's very valid. Okay. Uh, sorry, I think uh, absolutely I will add that to an agenda. I'll put that on the Finance uh, Strategy Management Committee agenda. Um, I, I think I've taken that view because I need to just make sure that our fire alarm systems would be happy with vaping because obviously there is obviously a, mm. a release of some gas or vapour, whatever it is. So, so I'll just do some research on that before. Thank you. Yeah, very good. Um, 
So that is update on Biddle for working works together. Uh, thank you. So we've arranged a meeting on Wednesday, the 27th of September. We've obviously agreed a budget through the Finance Strategy Management Committee. Um, and so we'll be able to fund activities within the town this year. Um, we are already starting to see a lot of people who, I don't know for what reason why there's a, an increase recently, but who uh, don't have access to food and um, don't have sufficient gas and electricity within their homes. So that is absolutely an issue going forward. So we're working to do uh, a lot of referrals to for supermarket vouchers, and we can do those because we are a community help point. Uh, we're allocated that through the county council, which gives us access to pots of money like that. So we can make those referrals because of that kind of status. Um, we can feed that into those bill of rights together meetings. And obviously, uh, county councillors have alluded to the fact tonight that we've had some discussions about the use of their grant funding to support activities as well. Oh, Sam's going to be a jail. You first. Yeah, just on that, because um, one of our key partners is a food bank. Jack is poorly at the moment. Okay. Um, I was just wondering if the town council could send her a get well card. Absolutely. So, Chris? Thanks, yeah, uh, just on the uh, bit of work together, there is a grant coming out from the district council. I think it's about 37, 38,000. Uh, and it's based on community groups helping with the cost of living crisis. So that, that's, I've got a meeting with the financial director on Thursday with the district. And hopefully we'll finalise that, but that's something I think Biddle for Works Together can, can tap into in terms of food banks and community groups and different things. I think that's a very welcoming uh, bit of news there, Chris. Okay. Thank you. Mean, sorry. Thank you. No problem. Um, would it be useful before, that, before those groups come together for that meeting, Sarah? If perhaps we fired an email out to them and asked them, um, well, firstly, have they have they actually put a bid in? And what Chris has just said, I don't know about that's welcome. Whether they've actually put any bids into the shared prosperity fund, and for them to give us any feedback whether any of them have been successful if they have. But obviously, the shared prosperity fund should hit a lot of the targets of many of those groups. <laughs> Thank you very much for that, David. Any, any other questions of, of anyone? Not, not you? No, I'm yeah? okay. Oh, no, right. I'm right, today. <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll move, move on. Thank you very much for that, Sarah. It's item 27, to receive an update on outside body meetings attended in the past month. Andrew. Ooh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, yes, Mulder's Partnership Board. Um, uh, monies have been allocated to projects. Uh, still about two thirds of the budget is left. So I would encourage anybody uh, who's thinking of putting together a bid from all this partnership to consider if, it, if they've already put in a, a phase one bid to put in a phase two and get that in uh, as quickly as possible, please, uh, as uh, there is still money in the kitty. Thank you very much. Yes, and we need to grab as much as we can from Moore's partnership. He's going to say something. Go on, man. Sorry, Wayne. You, you I'll sit down. Yeah. Is, is it possible for the Conservative Club to apply for some faux chimney pots to actually make that look like it should? Because I know they got, I know they got retrospective blimey version on appeal, but I still sit here and look out and think that it's, it's changed the character. And I think just having chimney pots on top of what they've done would actually put it back to where it, where it was, to be honest. You know, I know it's not quite the same, and that's yeah. not a slight act. I don't understand why you're doing it, but that would actually enhance the street scheme. Scene, basically. I don't want just... helping the Conservatives, yeah. but I'm not helping the Conservatives. Councillor Rogers, quickly, and then... Yes, just very quickly, because it's asking for an SPCA update. Just very quickly, we've got a new Chief Executive, <laughs> or Robert Pettigrew, uh, he actually come along to me a few weeks ago, just myself and Sarah and myself. Um, he seems very active. He wants to put a new face onto the parish assembly. And he wants to move around the districts. We were at Penkridge last week. I think we're in Litchfield next time. And he wants to come here at some point in the future. Ooh. So he wants to put a new face onto it and be more active in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that, Wayne. Councillor Smith. 
Um, yeah, just um, from Fair Trade, um, pleased to confirm that we have been, um, we're a Fair Trade community again, and that will um, be until the 27th of July 2026. Um, and Gillian Reynolds has asked me to convey uh, her thanks for the support, especially from the town council um, and the, the town council team that have helped with that. Thank you very much for that. Councillor Garvey, were you indicating? With regard to twinning, the Twinning Association hosted some visitors from Fusignano uh, over the bank holiday weekend. Um, and I'd like to thank the, the mayor and the officers of the, of the council for allowing an event to be hosted here in the town hall and for their support of the twinning group. I think the, our visitors had a thoroughly enjoyable time and um, let's send their thanks. Thank you very much. Um, if we can then move on to uh, 28, to confirm that the town council has received a Rosper Silver Award. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, Madam Chair. Whatever you are. Um, and obviously, we like a gold award as a town council, but a silver award is, is an absolutely fabulous achievement for a town parish council. Congratulations for us. It, it hopefully gives confidence in the people who book our facilities and the people who work with us that we will deliver. It adds another level of credibility to what we uh, are able to deliver here and hopefully shows what um, a competent organisation we are. So we have that silver award now um, as long as we don't break it. <laughs> Basically, as long as we don't do something that means to take it away from us. If we ever did want to uh, go for a gold award, we could do that. Um, it's the, the bigger organisations with health and safety teams um, that tend to achieve those, those levels uh, of, of achievement. So um, we are really pleased with the silver award and thanks to you all for um, indulging us as we went as we went for that. But it's a, it's a great achievement for everyone, so thank you. Very much. Mr. Hart. Yeah, another gong for Middle Town Council. Aren't we doing well? Uh, can I just ask, uh, have Lee and Cheadle got that gong? Uh, no. That does not surprise me. Have you seen we're unique or pioneers? Or just so, so good, it's unbelievable, Mr. Mayor. We are really so good. Streets ahead above the rest. Well, we've known that for years. Let's be fair, Larry. The quality council, isn't it, here? Yeah. understand. Um, <laughs> any questions? <laughs> Councillor Jones. Oh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, I just, just want to get you frustrated. Yeah, well done to Sarah and the team. It's them that have done it, not us. And I think it's another example of the diligence and tenacity and thoroughness of this team that we've got. We have a first A-class team here. I think we should. I move that we give them a big round of applause now, just a bit. Mm -hmm. yep. I think they're going to ask for a salary increase. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Don't that stop until the next year, Mr. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, now, item 29, which is mine in actual fact, because money is going to be involved in this, should this be confidential? Yeah. <laughs> right, fair enough. Right, uh, councillors, the chain. Um, this thing. It's, you might not see it, but I've wired it together with electric cable um, because it, it's falling apart. The, the smaller links here, because of the way, because the chain is getting bigger, the smaller links are stretching and breaking. Um, not only that, and you're putting it on, I think that does damage because you've got to be a bit of a... Well, I'm glad you're taking that away. Uh, oh, I'll have it back. <laughs> oh, right. Um, you know, the more we use it, the more likely that it's going to get damaged. Um, and, you know, you've only got to look... Over the last couple of years, the amount of events... The amount of events that uh, the mayor goes to is increasing. There's no two ways about it. I can't remember, Jim, what you did, but it was, it was a fair number. Can you remember? It was in three figures, put it that way. Yeah. So, you know, the, the chain does get some hammer. Um, what I'm saying to you, what I've noticed with, with other uh, councils, Leek, 
you know, etc. They have what they call, I call it a halter, which is sort of a, a velvet frame work, if you like, and their chains are then sewn onto this halter. That's the best word for it. Um, and that stops this thing flirting about and all that sort of business. Um, we do have some, well, as you're going around the paper, yeah. Uh, you can see from, from the image on, on the paper what I'm talking about. And I think if we went on that road, it's going to save the chain from being damaged further. Um, go on, Jill. I think I'm just concerned, uh, Mr. Mayor, about the restitching um, for future engravings that is going to be a continuous cost. My suggestion, yeah. well, would be that we move this to finance strategy and management for a debate, I think, because we need to discuss it. But, but just off the top of my head, my view would be that we have a halter with the main dangly bit on that you can use, for want of a better phrase, that you can use for kind of everyday events so yes. i don't know going to somebody and it's it's their birthday maybe with a few of the names the older ones stitched onto it but then the main chain um stays for special occasions and isn't stitched otherwise we're just going to have a continuous cost all the time because a dongle can be taken on and off that well, as that's it. It's so it's maybe, a dongle. maybe there could be a collar with the dongle um that you wear for every day but the dongle could be reattached to the main chain because i think from the looks of this, paying it anywhere between seven hundred and five pounds to, you know, five hundred quid or whatever, um, every year. Oh, I don't know. I'd, I don't know if it becomes a bit too. Um, I'm not it says, where, where you get it every. It says here. It says it has to be polished before it goes onto the onto the collar. So therefore, in twelve months' time, when another thing <laughs> goes on, it would have to come off, be polished again, and go back on. And that cost is going to be a yearly cost, not a one-off cost. So what is the answer? Well, I've, well, something similar to what I've just said: uh, something with the dongle for everyday wear, and then not stitched onto anything for like your proper bling occasions. But. All right, then. It's a discussion. That I think. Yes, we do. But this is why I put it as an agenda item. I know, but this, the agenda item, Mr. Mayor, for May, isn't for debate or discussion. It's just really for information giving. Generally, when we discuss things and we've got different ideas, it's done in a committee. I think there's a level of uh, procrastination, quite frankly, um, because what, what is happening, in addition to this thing getting damaged, of course, it plucks on your suit. So it's damaging your clothes because you have to put these pins in it, et cetera. So that is not uh, a good thing. The sooner we sort it out, the better. This is why it's been brought up tonight. Um, and believe it or not, the case, which I believe has been repaired, etc. cetera, um, Sharon, as you know, the deputy mayor, she picked the case up for me to get the chain out. The strap come off. The leather, which is on it, came off, which re uh, reveals as a metal strip and that slashed your finger. You know, so mm -hmm. I think the old setup needs revamping, quite frankly. Um, it might have been all right 50, 100 years ago, but it's now got all this weight to it and it needs sorting out. Are you putting your hand up there? Yes. Go on. Yeah, I, I think the mayor's got a valid point. I mean, I'm looking at it from this angle and the, the, the uh, little crests are disappearing over the shoulder, which obviously increases the weight, not just for the wearer, but but obviously for the worn chain itself. Uh, I think it might be a case of going somewhere where we can have a debate, but in a, in a timely manner, because it's something which does obviously want looking at. And it might be an instance where, for want of a better term, some of the shields get retired and perhaps incorporated within, within the photographs. So you keep it to, to a manageable weight and size, which both maintains the integrity of the chain and obviously maintains the longevity of the wearer. And then, and then if we do look at respectfully retiring and perhaps incorporating them within, within the photographs, within the names, which I think is, is a way of doing it. Because eventually, you're not going to have the things going down your back. So there's got to be a decision made sometime. And now might, be the, now might be the time where it's reasonable to do that. And then perhaps you could have a velvet altar which just acts as a pad. 
and then the chain goes over the top because what you've got is manageable. And then if you get a situation where the, the, the photographs do have the shield on all the time, I think that is a respectful way of looking at it. But I think something like that does need a little bit of thought and debate. And it's just what is a suggestion at this moment in time because yeah. it does disappear. Yeah, we've got two councillors, Councillor Jones, Councillor Garvey. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I, I would advocate exactly pretty much what Councillor Yates has just said. My, but it does need debating properly. I'm not, I'm not, personally, I'm not, I'm seeing a lot of them. I've, I've, I'm not a lover of these velvet colour things. And certainly to put a velvet colour on what you've got on now, I think it'd have to be about eight inches wide. Mm. And it's just going to look like a bib. Maybe you need one, I don't know. <laughs> and, <laughs> I would advocate say, I would advocate that <laughs> what Councillor Yates has said. Five pound fine. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, I would advocate what Councillor Yates has just said. I think maybe we need to change. We need to maybe restore that back to probably what it was okay. five years ago without that extra swag, with, but just with the newer uh, um, fields on it. And we have a, 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 an old, the old chain, if you like, the pre 2000 chain, if you like. And that's just an arbitrary date. And we keep that nicely somewhere safe in a display case. Um, but, it, you know, I've never had any issues with the chain. I've worn it two years, as you know. I didn't wear it a lot the second time around. And the first time I wore it, I haven't got that extra swag on. And personally, I think the extra swag being put on the front was a mistake. It should have been on the back. That's done now. But I think, you know, it needs proper discussion and proper debate. And, I, you know, I think we, we shouldn't make a decision on it tonight. A bit on, uh, I don't know, would it be TCC? Of finance, yeah, finance. It's going to cost money into itself. Can that? I think I think <laughs> so. Advocated that. I think that's what we should do, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, Councillor Garvey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm Councillor Jones, and again, Councillor Yates has said most of what I was going to say. Um, however, one thing I would advocate for is having been the proud custodian of the mayoral chain last year and been to a number of events. I would hate to see the Biddle's chain diminished in any way. Agreed. It is the envy of the entire district, and in fact, most of the county. Uh, and therefore, I would, I would hate to see that reduced in any way. And as the previous speakers have both said, we need, need to have a, a formal debate. And I can provide some additional expert input to the um, preparation of the type of device you're talking about from the good lady seems to us. Thank you very much. Councillor Garvey, you want to speak? Yeah. And Kevin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I'm just uh, conscious, obviously, this is the 50th year, isn't it, of the uh, existence of Biddleford Town Council. So um, I would suggest that, uh, yeah, it's 1973 74. So, uh, it's perhaps uh, a good time, you know, 50 years to, to actually look at it fresh and uh, have a, uh, say, a, a debate about what best to do. So I'd, I'd agree with that. Councillor Jackson. Yeah, could we also investigate what the cost of a new box would be? It sounds like we need one anyway, yeah. from what we said. But uh, yeah, yeah. if you have the new, a new, say that you had the altar set up and you had a new box, it's virtually the same as the altar. So you took them a grand for both jobs. Need that detail. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I, th I think Jill, you've proposed that it's moved to finance. Yeah. Is there a second for Jill? Oh, well, are you happy with that? Yeah, I'm happy. Well, no, I'm not happy with it, but I accept I accept, I accept the wrong Yeah, moves it forward. So, right, can we have a show of hands, please, in favour of moving this? Right, I think that's your name. Thank you very much. And uh, with that, we'll move on to uh, current consultation period in relation to the neighbourhood plan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, uh, obviously, through the planning committee, you've continued to receive updates in relation to the neighbourhood plan and the neighbourhood development order. So, uh, we finally believe we've got to a position where we and the district council are agreeing to the amendments, um, some of which agree with what the examiner had uh, put forward, some of which we've uh, amended the wording on and um, had some quite challenging debates on. Anyway, we're, we're at a position where we're all quite happy. That document, I believe, has been to Cabinet for consideration at the District Council and is now partway through a six-week consultation process. Uh, 
um, on those final amendments. So I've pinged you an email this afternoon about that, uh, just so you've got that email from you in the days. As I understand it, the six week process um, ends uh, at the end of September. There's then a period where I think they then have five weeks in the planning team to process any responses that they've had. And then beyond that, so I think that would then take us through October. Beyond that, we could be looking at a referendum during November. Um, obviously, that might slip a bit. I, I guess probably as a pen council, albeit we'll make that decision closer to, we probably don't want to be encouraging people to come out for a referendum and it's incredibly cold. So if we haven't done it before Christmas, uh, we need to be thinking about that. But we'll obviously take the advice of the elections team at uh, Saturday so morning. So that's where we are. Any mm -hmm. questions? I don't know. Questions? Kevin? You want to raffle on the turnout? Uh -huh. How do we go, I guess? Money goes to a charity. Are you being cynical? Yeah, I am. <laughs> Anyone else got a question at all on that? Right, all in favour, please put your hands. Yeah, well, noting it, yeah, thank you. Uh, right, we move over to 31, accounts and finance. Uh, you've all had time to uh, peruse. There's a supplementary sheet. Oh, there's a supplementary. There's always a supplement. They were at the entrance. Uh, have you got yours? No. Have another one. There's some there at the entrance, speaking of supposed to pick them up at Easton. Oh, right. Just during this brief interview, Mr. Mayor, can we get council that's not sat around the table in? Can we all shuffle a bit? Because I just feel a bit. Well, he's, he's got a bit of a cob on. <laughs> <laughs> this should be, we should be very inclusive and, and he sat out on a limb. We need to pull rectangles out. We need to pull rectangles out. It's a clarification. I do keep glancing over to see if he's sat with us. He hasn't fallen asleep at all. <laughs> right, if we can get back onto uh, item 31 then, uh, page one of this, um, going down, has anybody got any queries about Kev? Yes, on the page four, it's marked up at. But electricity, a bill for E on 25 clear. Yeah. What? And we've got a bill for, from Octopus. What's that bit for? Do we know? So I'm assuming there might be a standing charge to pay on that as well. I just don't understand what, where that's come from or what it is. What page are you talking? Sorry. It's on page four, number four. It's not. Yes, second page. Yeah, supplementary. About 10 or 12 down. Eon. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, oh, so one of them is Christmas lights. So we have to pay a small amount of that throughout the year, standing charge. Um, and then the octopus is the normal day-to-day -day usage. Okay. So the Eon contract that we've got is such a good deal that there was no point in us moving from the Eon contract to put everything with Octopus. So the, Oct the Octopus deal is that's, that's is a good one for day-to-day -day usage, yeah, but we have to pay the standard charge throughout the year. Yeah. Okay. If I can come back to page one, which is the Moreland Control uh, Contract Cleaning. Yeah. You've got a bill of £981, a few coppers, mm -hmm. followed by one, what's it, 1500 Seems quite... Hefty. This this just come in August, or yeah. it's, but it's for the rest of the year, obviously. Oh, that's for August. Uh, that's for August. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a hell of a bill. That's what we pay every month. In that every month. Yeah. For a month. Yeah. We're spending a penny, but this is ridiculous. If you calculate it down to an hourly rate, it actually does compute quite sensibly. That's does it really? That's why thousand districts get those toilets. Yeah. Progressive. Yeah. Now, do we put this out to tender? So, are we tied in with it for some reason? Uh, we we can get additional quotes on that when the time comes. Yeah. Oh right, that's fair enough. 
because I think it is a bit expensive, quite frankly. I don't know as we know that, because at the time of doing it, that was the cheapest. And, the really? and they've proved to be incredibly reliable throughout COVID and, and <clears throat> so So they only do the one at the, 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 the range? They only do that one? The business centre and they do the public toilets over here. Turns out £48 pounds a day. Which... Seven days a week. Yeah, which is quite reasonable. And they uh, provide the cleaning uh, materials. Oh, somewhere along here, we, we've got bills, haven't we, for cleaning? Yeah, that was over the board. That was vandalism. Hopefully, take them off. Vandalism, right? Yeah. Move one block. Move one block. Move them. The expenses. Is there a second for that? Yes. Huh? Oh, it's another block for. <laughs> we've worked on that. One against, which is me. Right. You're voting against it. And what? The accounts. Yes. No, the, the, the motion really. I think the accounts have got to be examined and just doing it to end block. You're not examining the accounts. Exactly. Unless this went before Finance Committee first. No, that's not the procedure. That's why you have it a week in advance. So you can consider it in advance of the meeting. So if I ask questions, no. Members around D can ask them straight away, can't they? Yeah. Councillor Jones. Councillor Jones. Yeah, before we vote on, I just I just noted that we seem to have spent in July and August ninety pound on oat cakes, and I just wondered if Councillor Rogers maybe needs to declare an interest. <laughs> 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 uh, I only had most of them. <laughs> We if, I might, if I might provide some clarity on that, we continue to support the Approach Dementia Cafe <laughs> and they provide cheesy oat cakes to come along. Oh, it's it's, been, it's been passed anyway. Chris, sorry, mate. Yeah, just, just before we, I know it's been moved in Saturday, but we haven't voted on it yet. So uh, the fountains and features, the fountain survey, um, where, have we, uh, are we in receipt of that? Yes. And it's into communities. Into finance. Uh, finance. Yes. We take it then that we voted on this. Yes. All the the yes I have. Okay. Right. Um, minute uh, well, like 32 to prove potential management arrangements in relation to confidential items that we moved it to public. Oh, yes. Sorry. You never saw that. Huh? For the public out. Thank you, people on YouTube. Yeah. Them. I'd like to thank the people on YouTube for attending this meeting and listening to us talk and try and do things. Yes, Unfortunately, we're now into what we call uh, confidential items.